My brother once sobbed uncontrollably at a family dinner in a French restaurant because our parents re refused to get him an Xbox 360. <laughs> but as a non-confrontational sibling, I don't have public outbursts. When I'm stressed or anxious or nervous, I tend to laugh. And I don't mean in a harmless, cute, <laughs> acceptable way. <laughs> More like if the year happened to be 1896, someone could have classified me as hysterical and immediately shipped me off to an asylum. <laughs> Freud says that laughter is a release of the psychic and emotional energy building inside a person, like steam venting to avoid an internal explosion. I know Freud isn't seen as the expert on today's psychological matters, but if the year were 1896 and he questioned me when this all began, I would tell him, it's been happening ever since I can remember. But the first specific instance I can recall is second grade. My second grade teacher was Mrs. Richards. She was a woman who seemed as ancient, sturdy, and all-knowing as time itself. She wore glasses underneath a head of tan curls, brown lines eroding the space around her mouth. She held the stern and exasperated demeanor of a person who had spent her entire adult life surrounded by small children against her will. Even my dad, who is now 60, says Mrs. Richards still terrifies him to this day. And all he had to do was endure parent-teacher conferences with her. One of Mrs. Richard's hallmark moves was having her students present a handwritten summary of a newspaper article once a week. But this was no normal second grade level presentation. Each of us was expected to walk ourselves to the front of the class and speak into a microphone to share our writing. She claimed this was to improve our public speaking abilities, but I think it was really a ploy to publicly mortify the seven-year-old she lorded over. It was my day to present that week. I can't remember what my article was about exactly. It probably didn't have anything to do with the Enron scandal or George W. Bush's political agenda, but more along the lines of whoever won the fourth season of the renowned reality TV show Survivor. Lauren, it's your turn, Mrs. Richards called out across the sea of desks, her eyes meeting mine. Please make your way up to the microphone. I shuffled to the head of the classroom. Public speaking had never been my forte, not that I'd had much experience at seven years old, and anxiety started to pulse through my body. My hands were quivering as I adjusted the microphone down a few inches and cleared my throat. Last week on Survivor, I began. <laughs> but then I locked eyes with my best friend, Rachel, who happened to be sitting in the front row. And it was all over before it even started. <laughs> Rachel's eyes grew wide and animated when I began giving my presentation, and she started to make that face, that face. I could tell there was a laugh creeping up the base of her throat, and she was doing everything in her power to prevent it from leaving her mouth. It kind of resembled a very animated, outburst-suppressing half smirk. My heart started to race even more rapidly, and my anxiety was out the window at this point. But so was every ounce of my second grade composure. I tried to look away from Rachel and her outburst suppressing smirk, but as Freud might have said, I needed to release my psychic and emotional energy somewhere. Even as I attempted to choke out a few words from the summary I'd written, the laughter had fully consumed me before I could go to the second sentence. I was in a hysterical state, my eyes watering with uncontrollable cackling. Rachel was the first to join in, but soon the entire class was laughing with us, or at us. That's enough. Please sit back down, Mrs. Richards spot. I would like to say that my episode in Mrs. Richards' classroom was the last time such an event happened, but it wasn't. I remember at age nine being sent away from the dinner table because I physically could not make myself stop laughing, even after being reprimanded. <laughs> During my college years, there's a commercial that would frequently run on TV advertising a drug for something called pseudobulbar effect. PBA, as it's more commonly known, is a disorder in which your brain mixes up your emotions and inappropriate laughter or crying happens as a result. <laughs> Multiple family members, separately I might add, mention this to me as something I may suffer from. <laughs> 
I think they were half joking, although to this day I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Even last year, while a former coworker of mine was being chewed out by a client during a Zoom meeting, I almost went off camera because I nearly started anxious, anxious laughing in front of all of them. But the worst, most embarrassing, terrible episode happened just a few months ago with Rachel, the same Rachel from second grade. She remains one of my best friends today, and we've stuck together through both the better and harder moments of life. Her mom recently passed away, a woman who filled every space she occupied with light and warmth, very much the same qualities I love in Rachel. I'll never forget her doing her hair and makeup before her ballet performances, her dancing to outcast Hey Y'all in their kitchen, or her picking me up in Southern San Diego to drive me all the way up to their house in North County for sleepovers. Rachel's family held a celebration of life at their home, and of course I went. But I wasn't in the best shape to be offering comfort. A couple of weeks earlier, my boyfriend and I broke up suddenly, made even messier by the fact that we lived together. After dating for nearly two years, I felt displaced in every aspect, emotionally, mentally, and physically. As I pulled up to, into Rachel's family home in the middle of a rainstorm, I tried to snap myself, myself out of the very dark place I was in. How are people supposed to do this, I thought. It all felt unbearably heavy, like I was on another planet with a stronger gravitational pull. I don't know if it was because I had spent the last few weeks crying or if I was losing a grip on my sanity, but as we were pulling up to Rachel's house in the rain, I could feel nervous laughter starting to pool in my stomach. I was so unbelievably sad for everyone and for everything and my despair was doing that all too familiar thing of transforming into something much more unpredictable. I was suddenly back in second grade with Mrs. Richard's watchful eye on me, filled with emotion and anxiety and ready to explode at the slightest trigger, even though it was an entirely inappropriate setting for laughter. I got out of my car, walked into Rachel's family's home, greeting family friends and making normal conversation. I was doing a pretty good job pulling it together, until I was standing with two of my close friends when an older woman came up and started talking to us. She was incredibly sweet, <laughs> with a faraway look in her eyes and a soft, barely audible voice. <laughs> I could feel the nervous giddiness bubbling in my stomach again. I caught Rachel's eye and she started to do that face, that face the half-smirk, outburst-suppressing face. I saw the laugh already building in my throat. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck, 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 I thought. But I was gonna keep it cool. I was gonna keep it together. But then, my other friend pointed to the necklace this older woman was wearing, which was a glass pendant with something mossy growing inside of it. It was an odd piece, like something she had plucked straight from the forest floor or was cosplaying as an elf from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> My friend asked, is your necklace alive? <laughs> the absurd question exploded in my brain. <laughs> necklace alive? No, absolutely not. I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> I turned away, letting out the laugh that had been des desperately trying to escape and sprinted to the bathroom, dodging people along the way. I shut the door and stared at my reflection in the mirror above the sink. I was already regretting my outburst immensely, wishing I could undo all of it. Why did I respond to stress in this way? Why couldn't I have cried like a normal person, like I'd been doing alone for weeks? Was I actually hysterical? The mirror in my stupid reflection surprisingly <laughs> held no answers. <laughs> I imagined myself asking these questions while laying on a chaste lounge, eyes boring into the ceiling, with Sigmund Freud sitting in a plush armchair behind me. Pipe in hand, spectacles falling down the bridge of his nose, he would say something about how unexpressed emotions will never die. They just come out later in uglier ways. And laughing in these situations was definitely not pretty. I think about that now how a lack of expressing myself in certain moments led to these strange outbursts in future, more stressful moments. Under the strict eyes of Mrs. Richards, with my parents at the dinner table, 
at work surrounded by my professional colleagues? Was this all just a means of me avoiding conflict, bottling up my feelings, and then eventually releasing them in non-productive and frankly frightening ways? I saw Rachel as I emerged from the bathroom after my episode, and she noticed my expression. Dude, are you good, she asked. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm fine. I'm just like, I don't know, I'm fine, you know? <laughs> she looked at me then, her eyes growing wide and animated, just like they had in second grade. At least I can always count on you to say something weird and awkward, she replied, laughing as she said it. And I laughed too, but one of my first real, genuine laughs of that day. It was a laugh that helped alleviate my stress, the nervousness, and anxiety rather than add to it. A laugh that even Mrs. Richards would have found acceptable. And most importantly, a laugh that wouldn't get me shipped along to the asylum. Thank you. Give it up for Lauren Fish! Lauren Fish!